There's only ever been a small set of individuals that have ever changed their respective sports completely. There's Shaquille O'Neal, who created the No Shatter Rule after completely destroying the entire backboards from his explosive dunks. There's Uwe Hohn from East Germany, who threw the javelin so far back in 1984 that the actual javelin instrument itself had to be forever changed, as to not risk throwing the spear into the crowd of innocent bystanders. Lastly, there's Bob Beeman, who literally jumped so far back in the 1968 Olympic Games that the measuring equipment wasn't even enough, and moving forward, the expectations for jumping and measuring had to be well over 9 meters in length. These athletes brought forth paradigm shifts in their respective disciplines. However, there was one even more unique athlete back in the 1980s and 1990s who was so unstoppable in his own event that he created a way to make more money than anyone else before him. Back on June 2nd of 1984, a young 20-year-old Sergei Bubka from the Soviet Union broke the world record in the men's pole vault, clearing a height of 5.85 meters, which equates to 19 feet 3 and 3 quarter inches. This was quite the jump from someone who was still considered a newcomer by many other athletes, but soon after this initial world record, his name would forever echo throughout the entire world of track and field. From 1983 up until 1997, a 14-year gap in athletic performances, Bupka became the greatest pole vaulter to ever live, and it wasn't even close. Throughout this incredible stretch, he won 12 individual global championships, he had multiple seasons where he was completely undefeated, but perhaps his most lasting accomplishment was the fact that he broke a total of 35 world records during his illustrious career, more than any other athlete before him. Now, this number is already insane, and it still stands as the single highest count of world records by any single athlete, but it's what lied behind these world records that really made Sergei Bubka's career so intriguing. By 1991, he had already accomplished pretty much anything that an athlete could attain. He was a multiple world champion, he was the Olympic champion, and he had already broken the world record more than 10 times. At this point in his career, he was such a dominant figure that very few athletes could ever challenge this man's greatness. One classic example of this absolute stranglehold that Bubka had on this event came on August 31st of 1984, when Thierry Vigneron from France managed to eclipse Bubka's world record by just one single centimeter, and even though this display of pole vaulting was quite incredible, Bubka came back just a few minutes later and literally broke Vigneron's world record on his very next attempt, now reaching a height of 5.94 meters, three centimeters higher than Vigneron's world record. By 1991, his success was so guaranteed that it almost became an afterthought as to who would ultimately come out on top. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is where Nike stepped in and offered Sergei Bubka a pretty sweet deal moving forward. In order to keep Bubka motivated and still competing, Nike offered a very special bonus for every world record that he would set moving forward. Now, there's a few separate estimates as to exactly how high these world record bonuses truly were, but from information that I've been able to find, they ranged anywhere from $40,000 up to a high of $100,000 for each world record that Sergey Bubka would ultimately break. Even by today's standards, this is a lot of money, but back in the 1990s, $100,000 was the equivalent of just over $200,000, if adjusted for inflation. To put it simply, Bubka had a pretty special opportunity to make an absolute fortune over the next few years. And well, what he did over the following few seasons was one of the smartest and most tactful decisions in sporting history. Starting in 1991, Bubka managed to break a total of eight new world records, both during his indoor season and his outdoor campaign. With some basic math, we can estimate that his 1991 world record bonuses ranged anywhere from $320,000 up to a maximum of about $800,000. Now, I would imagine that his world record bonuses fell somewhere in between these two numbers, but the crazy thing is that he was still just getting started. In 1992, Bubka again broke four new world records, which placed his earnings somewhere between $160,000 up to a possible limit of 400 k 
Now, if you've been noticing with these new world records, Bubka was extremely intelligent in his approach, as he only improved on his previous record by just one centimeter, meaning that he probably could have gone higher in many of these competitions. But based on delaying further heights in order to make more money, he was definitely incentivized to keep improving by the smallest of margins. By 1994, Bubka had broken a total of 15 new world records, meaning that his total earnings since 1991 fell somewhere between $600,000 and $1.5 million. Now, it's important to remember that this is only based on what Nike guaranteed to Sergei Bubka, so when you realize that he likely made more money for his other 20 previous world records, well, we're talking about earnings that could approach four or even perhaps five million dollars. And this is back in the 1980s and 1990s. On July 31st of 1994, Bubka would set his final world record with a clearance of 6.14 meters. However, moving forward to the 1997 World Championships, Bubka somehow managed to win the gold medal once again, this time clearing a height of 6.01 meters, and he did this at 33 years of age. For an entire generation, Bubka single-handedly moved the sport forward by a huge degree, but the business tactics that this man created for himself have never really been duplicated by anyone else quite like this. The only person that has ever managed to get close to this kind of world record creativity was Yelena Isinbayeva from Russia, from 2003 up to 2009. During this seven-year period, Isinbayeva broke the world record a total of 30 times, both for her indoor world records and her outdoor competitions. And just like Bubka, there's a slow and methodical approach to these records that very much mimic the kind of world record breakthroughs that you would want to make more money. At the moment, we're starting to see a surge from the very talented Mondo Duplantis from Sweden, who's already managed to break the world record a total of nine times, again mimicking the style of slow but steady improvements to make more money. Now, most recently, Duplantis broke the world record at this year's track and field world championships, clearing an incredible height of 6.21 meters. And as we can see from this one image, he made $100,000 from this one clearance. Not bad for just one day at the office. Indeed, Duplantis certainly has a very bright future ahead of him, and he likely has more records coming in the very near future. However, he still has a long way to go before he hits the mark of the legendary Sergei Bubka, who once again broke the world record on 35 separate occasions. Thanks for watching, everyone. And as always, until next time.